The next forecasting model we're looking at is the seasonal model with no trend. We're looking at patterns of seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter, affecting sales levels. The idea is that there's an overall sales level through the year and then variations up or down based on the season of the year. The formulas for the seasonal model have a forecast value where a forecast in the next period is equal to the level that we expect we have. It's like a smoothing model that we don't think there's any trend up or down, but we're going to multiply by a seasonal factor. The notation of the seasonal factor is a little bit complicated. It has to do with the fact that we're talking about seasons and the only thing we know about the impact of a season is what we see the previous year. So the only time we can tell you what spring looks like is once a year. So if we're going to update this spring seasonal factor, we have to look at what we thought a year ago. So that's why we have this notation with the P variable in here. As we see here when we talk about quarterly data making quarterly forecasts, P will be equal to 4, meaning spring happens every four quarters. If we had a monthly model, January would happen every 12 months. So if we want to look back the previous season, we move back four quarters if we have quarterly data or 12 months if we have monthly data. This notation will be fairly simple to understand once we look at a numerical example. When we update the level, we have to take into account the seasonal factor. The level is what sales would be without the impact of the season. So when we're looking at our actual sales data, we need to adjust out the seasonal factor that we were using to get our forecast. We're going to multiply by a seasonal factor to get our forecast. So if we want to see the underlying level, we take the actual sales and divide by the seasonal factor. So when we update the level, we look at the actual data and what we thought the level was. So it's similar, we just have to undo the seasonal impact. We also update the seasonal factor. Part of it is what we thought the seasonal factor was one year prior. The other part, we estimate the seasonal factor looking at the actual and our underlying level that we just updated. So again, these formulas look a little bit complicated, but in practice, they're not that difficult to apply. To initialize a seasonal model, we're going to need two years worth of data. In this example, we're going to use quarterly seasonal model. For planning purposes, it's probably more realistic to use a monthly model. You wouldn't want to use a model with more detail than that in general. We're using a quarterly model just because of space considerations in the presentation and it makes the math a little easier, makes the example a little easier. With two years worth of data, we're going to determine the underlying level and also the seasonal factors. The first thing we do is average the same quarter. So we're going to take this spring along with this spring, average them together and get our first quarterly average. So spring of 2016, we had sales of 16. Spring of 2017, we had the same number. We average those together, we get 16. Summer, we have 27 and 26. In 2016 and 2017, we take those two, average them together, we're going to get 26 and a half. Fall, we had 39 and 43. We take these two, average them together, and get 41 as our average for fall. We get 41 as the average for fall over the two years. Finally, winter, we had 22 and 23. We take these two, average them together, and that gives us 22. So we're merely averaging the same quarters together to get an average value for that quarter. Next, we need the overall average. That's also going to be our estimate for the level. And we can get that two ways. We can sum up the entire set of sales and divide by 8. Or we can take these quarterly averages and divide by 4 because the quarterly averages are just averages themselves of the same season. So whether we average all 8 values in the sales column or average the 4 values in the quarterly average column, we get the underlying sales level of 26 and a half. So over this two year period, average sales were 26 and a half, but they were higher or lower based on the season. Next, we're going to get the seasonal factor. So the seasonal factor is going to be for spring. 
we take the quarter average of 16 divided by the overall average of 26.5 and that gives us 0 0.60. Summer, we're going to take the quarterly average of 26.5 divided by 26.5 and we get 1.00. For fall, we're going to take the average for sales for quarters in the fall of 41, divide it by the overall average for sales in a quarter of 26.5, we get 1.55. And finally, winter, we're going to take the average of 22.5, divided by the overall average of 26.5, and that's going to give us 0 0.85. So what do these numbers mean? Well, these numbers say that when you're talking about spring, sales are 60% of the typical average quarterly sales. In other words, 60% of this 26.5. So spring is a low period. We're going to again forecast a sales level and then adjust up or down. So spring, we adjust down the 60% of that level. Summer is our very typical quarter right now. Fall is our high quarter for this product, so sales are 55% above the typical quarterly average. And finally, winter is 85% of the typical average. If we sum these numbers up, we're going to get 4.00. Maybe there'll be some rounding, but we'll get 4.00 or an average of 1. So in this initialization period, because of the averaging we're doing, the division we're doing, we're going to get four seasonal factors that should add up to 4 should average to one. One is the typical quarter. If they don't, then you've made a mathematical error. With the model initialized, we can forecast. We're not going to need the 2016 data because what we really need are the level that we've gotten and the four seasonal factors in initializing the model with data from 2016 and 2017. Now we can forecast 2018 and beyond using the level and these four seasonal factors. We can see the forecast now. We take the level that we have, 26.5, multiply it by the appropriate seasonal factor, and we get our first forecast of 15.9. Second, we take that same level, multiply it by a seasonal factor of 1. That's our forecast for summer, fall, and finally winter. So we're just multiplying the level by the appropriate seasonal factor. And in fact, this is a little bit of a rounding error. If you look at these first four forecasts, they're no different than just the quarterly averages that we got in initializing the model, other than a little rounding error. So we need these seasonal factors and the level to carry the model forward and to adjust to new data. But our first forecasts are really just the averages of the previous spring, the previous summers, previous falls, and previous winters. And if we wanted to forecast 2019, it would be the same values, 15.9 or 16, 26.5, 41, and 22.5. And we would continue on in that fashion. Once time has passed, and we see what the sales are after a particular quarter, here in spring 2018, we found out that sales were actually 14, and we forecast 15.9 or 16. We can update our factors. We can update and come up with a new level. We can update and come up with a new spring seasonal factor, and then redo forecasts in the future. To update the level, use the formula L of t is equal to alpha a sub t, our actual sales in period t, divided by the seasonal factor in period T minus P. All right, that's because we're talking about spring. We need to look back to the previous spring to find our seasonal factor. We're going to add to that 1 minus alpha times the level we had in period T minus 1. So we're talking about here, we want to find out a new level for period 9. So we're going to take alpha times the actual value we have in period 9, our new spring sales, divide it by the seasonal factor we have in 
9 minus 4 is 5. Seasonal factor in period 5 and 5 is right here. We don't know what the seasonal factor is this year. We're going to update that. So the last time we knew what spring did to sales was in 2017, was four quarters prior. So that's where the T minus P notation comes in. And again, we divide by the seasonal factor because this sales level is a sales level that's going to be 60% down from a typical quarter. So we want to see what kind of level that represents. We have to undo the impact of seasons on the sales. We're going to add to this, again, 1 minus alpha times a level in 9 minus 1 or 8. And again, this is the last level we knew in period 8. So we're going to use that plus what we just saw as sales level, which is slightly under forecast, 14 compared to 16. So we're going to drop our level down a little bit. We're using an alpha here of 0 0.2. Our actual sales were 14. We divide out the impact of the season, which is 0 0.60. If we look at 14 divided by 0 0.60, we get 23.3. So sales of 14 in a spring quarter represent a level of 23.3 compared to the 26.5 we thought we had. So we're going to take 20% of this new value and we're going to take 0 0.8 times the level we thought we had, 26.5, and that's going to give us 25.9. So our new level is 25.9. It's reduced a little bit because sales of 14 in spring look like a level of 23.3 so we knock our level down just a little bit. Next to update the seasonal factor we use the formula S of T is going to be equal to gamma which is our new parameter to adjust how quickly we change seasonal factors, how quickly we adjust to new data, times the actual value of sales in period T divided by the newly calculated level in period T that's going to be our observed seasonal factor. And then we're going to take 1 minus gamma times the seasonal factor in period T minus P. In other words, the seasonal factor in the previous spring. So we want S in period 9. We want to update the seasonal factor in period 9. That's going to be equal to 0 0.3. That's the value we're using for gamma times A in period 9, the actual sales in period 9 divided by the level in period 9, plus 1 minus gamma is 0 0.7 times the seasonal factor in period 9 minus 4, which is 5. Right? So we have 0 0.3 times 14, which is our actual sales, divided by our new average of 25.9. And this represents a seasonal factor of 0 0.54. So spring sales look like sales that are 54% of typical versus the 60% we had before. So we're going to take 30% of that, but 70% of our new seasonal factor is going to be based on the seasonal factor in period 5, the last spring that we had because we're updating spring. So that's 0 0.7 times 0 0.60. And when we're all said and done, we get 0 0.58. So our new seasonal factor is 0 0.58. The interesting thing is we're not going to use that right away. We're going to use the new level of 25.9 throughout our forecast, but we're only going to use this new seasonal factor in spring of 2019. If we look at our forecasts, we have new forecasts here. We have a new level that we're using. We have the same seasonal factors for summer, fall, winter, but here in spring of 2019, we use our new seasonal factor. Once summer 2018 is over, you find out that sales were 29, whereas we forecast sales of 25.9. We under forecast sales so we're going to adjust our level, and we're going to adjust it up using the formulas. We're also going to make an adjustment to the summer seasonal factor. It may be that the overall sales level has shifted, 
or it may be that summer has a greater impact on the sales. We're not sure which. We're going to make a small adjustment to both of these. The formula we're going to use, again, is the level in period 10 is going to be equal to alpha times the actual sales in period 10 divided by the seasonal factor in period 6. The last time we knew what summer did was in period 6, so we're going to update summer again. And in this formula, to undo the impact of the season on the actual sales level, we're going to divide by the seasonal factor for period 6 and take 1 minus alpha times the level in period 9. Substituting in, we get 0 0.2 times 29 divided by the seasonal factor of 1.00. We're going to add to that 0 0.8, or 80% of what we thought we had, which was 25.9. This is equivalent to 29 sales level. We thought we had 25.9. When we do the math, we'll get 26.5 as our level. Interestingly enough, we're right back at the level we had prior. And if there's not a consistent shift in either the level or seasonal factors, we will see oscillation in the levels, we'll see oscillation in the seasonal factors, but not an overall shift. If there's been a shift in the data, we're going to consistently adjust until we adapt to that new data. So we shifted down a little bit, now we've shifted back a little bit, and that's pretty typical. Next, we're going to update the seasonal factor for summer. So we want a new seasonal factor for period 10. And we're going to use the formula gamma times the actual sales in period 10 divided by the sales level in period 10 that we just estimated, we just updated. And 1 minus gamma times the seasonal factor in period 6. So our previous guess as the summer plus what we just observed are going to allow us to update that seasonal factor. 0 0.3 is our gamma. Actual sales in period 10 are 29 divided by the level that we just estimated as 26.5. And 1 minus gamma is 0 0.7. Our previous seasonal factor was 1.00 back in period 6, back the last summer. This new observed seasonal factor looks like 1.09 compared to the 1.00. When we do the math, we're going to shift our seasonal factor to 1.03. We're going to increase it slightly because of the new data. Because we under forecast, our levels increase slightly and our seasonal factor is increased slightly. If we want to forecast sales in period 11, in other words, fall of 2018, we're going to take the level in period 10 times the seasonal factor in period 7. We're going to forecast fall. The last time we knew what fall did was back in period 7. So we're going to use our new level, 26.5, multiply that by 1.55, and that's going to give us 41.1. Notice we do not use this new seasonal factor. We don't use it until summer 2019. We can forecast the fall as we just did, winter, spring, and summer 2019 is when we use the new seasonal factor. So again, in this example, we have three years worth of data. The first two years are used to initialize the model. We have, again, what's called the ex post forecast period where we have extra data so we can try making forecasts, which is this red line, and comparing it to our data. And the fit's pretty good, and the fit should be good. It's got to be really good in the initialization because we are using the real data. The ex post should fit well if we have any confidence that our true forecast for the next year, this green line, have a chance of being at NEO, have a chance of being useful to us for planning.
Let's see how we program seasonal forecasting in an Excel spreadsheet. We have our spreadsheet set up here where we're looking at the years, the quarters, and the periods, and we have three years of sales data, two years to initialize the model, one year for the ex post forecast, and we can make forecasts for 2019. The first step is to get quarterly averages. So we'll start in a row with spring 2017, type equals average. We'll take spring 2016 sales, comma, because we want to average two numbers. And here's where Excel doesn't help us much. We want to average it with the spring of 2017, but the formula is there. We can't select that and get it in the formula. So we'll just go up here and manually type E8. E4 and E8 are the two spring quarterly sales values. Put in the right parentheses, and now we get our value. We can take this formula and drag it down and get the quarterly averages for spring, summer, fall, and winter. Next, we need to average the two years worth of data. That's going to give us our level for the first two years. We can type equals average, and we have two choices. We can average the sales over the two years, which gives us 26.5, but we can also type average and select the quarterly averages because their averages themselves will also get 26.5. So either will work for us. Next, we want to get the seasonal factors. So we're going to type equals the quarterly average divided by the overall average. And we'll use our F4 key or Command T to make that an absolute reference so that we can take this and drag it all the way down and display these with two digits. As a check, we can just click and sum up these values and see that they add up to four. They would average to one. So looks like we've done our seasonal factors correctly. Next, we're gonna highlight this two years worth of data yellow so that we can denote this as the initialization period. Now we can make our first forecast. We're going to take the level of 26.5 times the seasonal factor for spring because we're forecasting spring 2018 and we get 16. And let's just make these centered while we're at it. So we can see that our first forecast is going to be the same as our quarterly average. In fact, if we forecast the entire year with this data, we would just get these quarterly average values as our forecast. But since we have extra data, we can put in our updating formulas and update forecast update through this ex post forecast period. First, let's update our level. So in the level column, we're going to type equals alpha. We'll use command T or F4 on a Windows computer to make that an absolute reference. So we can copy it down times the actual sales, which we had of 14 divided by the seasonal factor. We want to undo the impact of seasons on that spring value. So we're going to divide it by the seasonal factor we had for spring 2017 because we want an estimate of the level. Then we're going to take 1 minus alpha, again, Command-T or F4, so it's an absolute reference, times what we thought the level was in the previous year, 26.5. We get 25.83. Let's take that down to one digit. Next, we can update the seasonal factor. So we're going to take equals gamma, again an absolute reference, times our actual sales divided by our new level, plus parentheses 1 minus gamma, again with an absolute reference, times 
our last spring seasonal factor, which was up here in period five, spring of 2017. We get 0.59. Now we can forecast. We just drag this forecast value down. We're going to get our 25.83. Or, there we go, reduce it to just 25.8. We can take these formulas for updating the level and the seasonal factors, drag them down. We can also drag down the forecast. And this, we're going to color in a reddish color to represent the ex post forecast period. So this is where we would compare our actual sales levels to our forecasts and see how good the model is working. We might adjust our alpha and gamma to tune the model before we actually make our forecasts. To make our forecast, we're going to take our level and we're going to use an absolute reference because we always want to refer to that level times the appropriate seasonal factor and hit return. Let's undo the highlighting, drag this down. And now let's highlight it in green because that is in fact our forecast. If we were going to forecast two years in the future, we would use these same values again. We would have to adjust the formula. But until we get new data, this is our forecast for every year into the future.